Hello and welcome to the channel. With just a day to the rescheduled governorship election, it has emerged that some states are planning to massively rig the Guba and state houses of assembly elections on Saturday as a result of what transpired during the presidential election where the structureless Peter Obi's Labour Party swept across most of these states like a tornado. This time around, the governors mostly affected are taking no chances and leaving no stone unturned as they plan on securing their positions or their stooges positions and even their preferred choices for the state assembly. Let's get more details on this. Subscribe, like, share and comment. Thank you. Concerns mount over governor's moves to rig Saturday's polls by all means. With barely 24 hours to the governorship and state houses of assembly elections, concerns have heightened over alleged moves by governors to rig the elections by all means possible, including resorting to extrajudicial means to compromise the process. Aside allegedly recruiting thugs to help them disrupt the process to garner more votes, these day findings have revealed that one of the means through which the governors intend to rig the exercises by working with the resident electoral commissioners, Rex, in their respective states. In addition to this is another alleged plan to further compromise the electoral officers, thus making the falsification of results much easier than it was in the previous exercise. But if these moves were to be thwarted, observers hinted the authorities and the people might have to observe the chemistry between the governors, their recs, and the electoral officers closely before they close in on them. The third idea being allegedly considered as part of the rigging plan is to frustrate the bimodal voter accreditation system beavers from working, a situation that would enable them to handle the collation of results manually through their proxies for desired outcome. To give force of effect to some of their other plans, the governors allegedly in cahoots with security agencies have started to arrest some prominent opposition members, especially in northern Nigeria, and forcing people to vote for them against their wish. Expectedly, however, the opposition has not been finding any of the moves funny and had started reacting. A development close observers of the policy reckon could talk violence before during and after the elections. Unfortunately, these allegations have continued to escalate across the states of the Federation that governors of the ruling parties in their respective states had been raising army of thugs to disrupt and rig the polls. Of the 28 states that are contesting in the elections that would hold in 1,021 constituencies across the country and also involving 933 state assembly candidates apparently afraid of losing are said to be devising these schemes to ensure they or their preferred candidates emerge victorious. The allegations started to gain currency owing largely to how some of the governors helped to manipulate the last presidential election to favor their preferred presidential candidates. In other instances, those whose candidates lost in the February 25th presidential and the National Assembly elections are said to be girding their loins for the titanic battle to make sure that they prevail in the March 18 governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Some of the results of the February 25th presidential and the National Assembly elections are believed to have sent shivers down the spines of some governors, a few of who also lost their bid to go to the Senate in furtherance of their political career. For instance, Governors Okezie Ikbiazu Habia, Samuel Otom Benwe, Simon Lalong Plateau, and Ben Ayade Cross River all lost their bid to move on to the Senate as they either lost to the obedient movement through the Labour Party LP or the opposition People's Democratic Party PDP. Subscribe, like, share, and comment also. Turn the notification bell on. Thank you. Consequently, this has shifted the balance of power in many of the states and in many respects with the results of the presidential election sending a frightening signal to the governors who now consider the need to brace up for their own elections before more surprises come their ways. 
Not surprising, concerns by the governors have been exacerbated by the strength of the obedient movement, an idea patterned after the now failed presidential bid of a former Anambra state governor, Peter Obi, but which has undone many political structures and potential dynasties in the country. It is against the backdrop of the recent political tsunami which eventually produced the whole Progressives Congress APC presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu as the president-elect, that the governors are now being accused of taking extrajudicial steps to either retain power or ensure their choice candidates coast home to victory on Saturday. Our next chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubo, on Tuesday advised the candidates, their political parties and supporters not to see the polls as a war but as a contest. It is important for parties and candidates to speak to their agents and supporters to see the elections as a contest and not a war. They should refrain from acts of violence that may mar the elections or compromise the security of our personnel, observers, the media and service providers, the INEC chairman had said. Yakubo had also said the commission was expecting a coordinated deployment of security, intelligence, law enforcement and safety agencies to quell violence that may arise. At the same time, the National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Moguno, retired, had said Saturday's elections were going to be much more complicated. According to him, first of all, we are going to have 1,021 constituencies, meaning we are going to have more people interested, more people voting, more coalition centers, and obviously the dynamics will be much more different than the elections that we have just concluded. He therefore urged political gladiators and individuals to demonstrate maturity and discipline by calling their supporters to conduct themselves in manner that are in sync with the expectation of a larger Nigerian society. We must comply with the rules. We must also allow everyone to exercise their fundamental rights as citizens of this country. What we do not want happening is for anybody to take the law into his or her own hands. I want to be very clear on this. We are going to give maximum support to all entities involved in this process and we are also calling on the political bigwigs to call their lieutenants to order. Anyone who is itching to undermine this process should please think again. It is not in his own interest. It is not in the interest of the nation as well. He added. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.